Hey everyone, and welcome to the Let's Play episode of How I Do What I Do. This is the first episode of a series where I just show you how I do everything I do on this channel. I'm going to be taking you through every step of the process, so some of these episodes might be pretty long. Also keep in mind that this is just how I do everything. It's not necessarily the best way for a beginner to do anything, nor is this really meant to give any advice. This is just to show people who want to know. I'm going to be showing all kinds of things, like how I do creepypasta readings, how I do Payday 2 101, how I Let's Play in this episode, and even how I stream. If anyone has any requests of more episodes, let me know in the comments section below, but without further ado, this is step-by-step -step how I do Let's Play episodes. So the first step of making a Let's Play video or playthrough, whatever we want to call it, is the recording software. I use many different recording softwares depending on the game, but the one that I use for the vast majority of things here is Marillus Action, is what we're looking at right now. Whenever Marillus Action doesn't work, I use OBS or OBS, it's completely free. That is also what I use to stream, and in fact that's what I'm using to record this screen right here. In fact, you can see right here, that is the video you're currently watching being recorded live. So I'm going to take you through every single setting, so you can see every single setting I use. This is what actually creates the game capture footage of the game that we'll later be editing. So I just have it in the regular, detect game mode, it's pretty good about detecting what game I want to play. I have it in AVI, original file size, I have it in 60 frames per second because YouTube does not do higher at the time of recording this. Make sure that you have perfect video match mode turned off, or else sometimes the cursor doesn't show up. Record system sounds, yes, so it's got the game audio, record on multi-channel multi audio recording, yes, and microphone always on. You'll be able to split your audio tracks later so that your game audio and your microphone audio are always synced up, but on separate tracks later, and I'll go into that later. So for the settings, we don't need to go through any of these, none of those have anything to do with the video recording. All we're gonna do is go over to settings, and we wanna look at our video record settings. Just make sure that the quality is set to the highest and the bitrate is set to the highest. Use multi-core recording, because I'm sure you've got multiple cores. And record mouse cursor without visualizing mouse clicks. You can pick where your overlay graphic is if you want one, but I don't recommend one. And that's really it. You can click up here if you want to change where your raw footage is recorded to, where I just have it go to my second hard drive. But that's about it. Uh, so the only thing I'm not going to show in this whole process is I'm just going to open up some uh, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. I'm going to press the record button, record an episode, press the record button again to stop the recording, and then we're going to come back into the editing stage. So all you're missing is literally open the game, press button, do episode, press button again. Be back in a moment. We're back now, having had recorded the episode of Shadow of Mordor. We can see here in my raw footage file on my second drive that uh, this is what we're recording right now. This is the action thing I recorded earlier that you already saw. And we have two video files right here for the actual uh, Let's Play episode I did. That's because I actually manually stopped recording at one point to take a short break. So you can see this is the first one, it's the longer one, there's the second one. You notice the frame rate is probably quite low actually for this part because this is a monitor capture. Um, I will, I can explain that some other time though. I'll probably explain that in the streaming video. So I happen to already know this is going to be part uh, 26 of the Let's Play, so I'll call that part 26-1. And part 26-2. And that way that is well organized. Now, before we go into the next part of the video, the next step we have to do is... You want to go Google search DxTory, it's a recording software, download and install the demo of it, alright? Just pause the video, go do that. Alright, you've come back from doing that now, right? Okay, now you never have to boot DxTory ever. So you may be wondering, why the hell did you just tell me to go get that? Because, weirdly enough, if you have DxTory, a completely separate piece of software, and then you use Marillus Action, and you had it record the microphone along with it, then if you were to just click on this video and watch the video, you'll notice your microphone is not on it. However, if you right-click it now that you have DxTory, and extract audio stream, then... Na -na -na -na, it starts splitting the audio into ST0 and ST1. 
it does ST0 first, which is the game audio, you will just delete that because you already have that, and then ST1 will be your microphone. So I'm just going to go ahead and have both of them do that. And sometimes this takes a very, very long time to do. So I'm just going to go do better things while I wait for that to happen, and once it's done we'll go on to the next step, which is the audio editing bit we do before we do the video. Alright, now we're on to the audio editing step. I'm using Adobe Audition 3, I believe it is, which is my audio editing program of choice. And we have right here on our file list, we have part 26 1, 2, of course the ST1 versions because that's my actual audio, and then my white noise profile, which is literally just a sample of the white noise from my microphone. So uh, what I do in this part is, first of all, you'll notice, um, there have been games for like... That's only coming out the right ear or right speaker. That is because I use a mono microphone and a lot of programs don't know how to handle that. So I'm going to control A to select all, I'm going to hit down arrow, and then, uh, actually, you know what, before I do that, uh, was it shift control S, uh, because I want to save this, and it's, uh, ah shit, where was it, Shadow Mordor. Go to Shadow Mordor, switch to MP3, save. Now, <clears throat> These things take a while sometimes. Audio editing is kind of weird that way. So I'm just going to show you how to do this with one of them. Because, uh, you know what? I'll do it with a shorter one, because that way we don't need to wait as long. Yeah. I'm going to cancel that. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to make this as fast as possible for on screen. So we're going to save this one. We're going to save both of them, but this one's going to be on screen. There we go. That's way faster because it's a tiny file. So right now we're just saving an mp3 version of it, that's what I'll be editing with. Just because it's way faster to apply the effects to, and YouTube can't tell the difference between the qualities. Although it is technically a lower quality. Anyway, uh, I've got that saved, now I'm going to control A to select all, down arrow, control C to copy, and then up arrow twice, control V to paste. There we go. Mono has become stereo! dive right now, or right there, is because as you can see by me turning Yeah, there we go. That sounds fine. Alright, now I'm just gonna go to my white noise thing, select all, um, not copy. I'm gonna go down to my effects, and under restoration I'm gonna capture noise profile. That takes the sample I have. And then back up here, control A, and noise reduction. You can pause there and see the settings on it if you want to, but it's just basic stuff. So that's gonna take my white noise and remove it from that whole audio quit clip. Then one last control S just to save this new version of it. All right, and I'm going to off screen real quick do it with the other half too. See you in a moment. Now that audio editing is done, we're going to go into Adobe Premiere Pro CS 5.5, which is my video editor of choice, and we're going to edit this episode. So we're going to go to new project, and uh, we need a name for the project, so I'm just going to go ahead and name it after the previous episode, just copy that and paste that in, and change that to episode 6, and co recopy that. And for the sequence, any second now, here we go, I'm just going to paste in the same thing. Uh, the whole editor is going to run a little bit slower because I am recording this while I do it, so that slows things down a bit. But yeah, um, I made my own custom preset here. You can read all of the details on it right here, so just pause and check that out if you want to check that out. I do 60 frames per second, of course. And let me, um, as that opens up, let me go to the Nether Realms of Monitor 2, and I can get us a better view of this in a better frame right now. There we go. That's better. Um, Premiere doesn't like being recorded very much, but it seems like I found a workaround for it. So I'm just going to close all the empty timelines from the previous project. And expand that. So we are going to want to drag in all of our footage. So you can't see me dragging it in, but you know it's happening because I'm telling you that it's happening. So I just dragged in the two video files, and you'll see down here, it's confirming the video files. Make sure you let it confirm it fully before you render anything, or else sometimes audio fucks up and weird little things like that. Nothing bad is supposed to happen, but sometimes it happens. We're also going to open this up and go to voice clips. Let's play uh, Shadow Mordor and grab those two. 
Save that, and Will's confirming we can do a little bit though. So I'm just gonna drag in the part one version of both of those. This one is of course my audio track of my microphone. This one is the video track of the game, as well as the audio track of the game. And I'm just gonna fast forward time real quick until after these confirmings are done. All right, we're, we've skipped ahead a little bit until the uh, confirming is done. We're also back on the monitor view, so everything's gonna be a lower frame rate than usual. I noticed on the window capture it wasn't actually showing you the preview of the video. So all I've done here is I drag this stuff in, and I want to go to the audio gain on my microphone here and put it to 8, because that usually sounds good. And let's watch the beginning. Hey everybody! Okay, intro is here, so we want to go just a little bit before that. And what I did right there is I hit C for my cutter, hold down shift to cut everything there, and then I clicked, and then I hit V again to go back to my mouse. Also, uh, Control D and Control E, which I've set up to be my shortcuts for Cross Dissolve and Constant Power. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, that way we have a two second audio fade into the game noise, a one second fade into the game video, and my voice doesn't fade in at, at all. Ugh. So, I'm gonna hit page down to skip to the end of this clip. You'll notice that we have two clips here. This is because I got interrupted by one of my cats, Millie, during this. So let me just, uh, I'll just put those there for now and uh, bring that audio up. So I got interrupted around here. Mm, one moment. We're just gonna cut there and bring this in. <sighs> Looks like I start doing things around here. Let's just uh, see how this is. Mm, one moment. I'm back, sorry about that. So that's really abrupt. So we're gonna do our Control D, Control E thing. Mm, one moment. I'm back, sorry about that. Uh, that's a lot better. And again, the frame rate you're seeing on YouTube right now is very, very low for this. When this episode comes out, it'll be a full 60 frames. It's just the nature of how weird it is being able to record on monitor capture. And I don't feel like turning off Windows error f Arrow for this. Even then, that doesn't even always work. Um, Spoiler alerts, by the way, for Shadow of Mordor Part 26 if this hasn't come out yet. Gonna page down again to go to the end of the recording. I'm have a nice day. And you'll notice I ran there for a really long time at the end. The reason I did that is for this. I'm have a nice day. I can cut right about there. And now, I'm have a nice day. As we fade out, I'm running and it looks beautiful. So normally what I would do at this point now is I've done the beginning, I've done the end, and I've cut anything together that needs to be pasted together. Now what I would do is I would just go to the beginning, hit spacebar, and watch the whole episode. Um, mostly that's for audio purposes. I don't really put in any gags or anything like that. Sometimes I'll put in fast forward if something is insanely boring, but I rarely do that. It's mostly for audio stuff. Like, let's say, right, I don't know, for the sake of argument, let's say that this line right here was way, way louder. It peaked to the microphone hardcore. I, what I would do is I would just cut before and after it. It's the, uh, it's me saying the, uh, I can, in fact, isolate that soundtrack. It's the, uh, you can just hear me clicking a lot. Um, if this were to peak it, I could just, you know, bring the, bring the volume down, and then it sounds more like this. I wonder if the, uh, it's just a subtle little difference. If it ever peaks the microphone, I'll, I'll do things like that to touch it up. I rarely miss microphone peaks, but I do from time to time. In general, though, I just recommend to anyone who Let's Plays really to watch through all of their own footage. Like, it takes a really long time to do. Believe me, I've been doing this for, what, four years of a minimum of a video a day? You spend a lot of time watching this stuff back, but it really does help the quality of your stuff. Sometimes you just re-record an episode because you think the episode sucked. I rarely do that anymore just because I'm pretty much in the groove of it after all these years, but, you know, it happens. So, the next step I do, I'm just kind of skipping through. Sometimes the video fucks up a little there and gets stuck. It happens. I mostly skim through and look for what looks like it would be a really good screenshot for the thumbnail at this point. Unfortunately, almost all this mission was at night. So the lighting is never really that good. You know, the beginning was in the morning, right? Let's let's get a clip from the beginning. Oh, hold on, we could do something here. Let's uh, let's zoom in on our timeline. Uh, it started there. Oh, hold on. 
That one looks good. Alright, so we're gonna click the screenshot button right here, and I'll save to my screenshot folder. We'll go into the thumbnail making at the very end, but it's not very interesting. So I saved that screenshot. I think we're... I think we're done with this video. Um, I'll sweep through it off camera for the fixing up audio thing. So I'm gonna control M to bring me to my recording, or my, uh, my render settings. Here's my render settings. I'm just gonna quickly go through all of these without really telling you what any of them are. Just so you can just straight up copy them. If you have this program, copy my settings. I don't care, go for it. it they're good settings. It's what I use. There you go, it's all my settings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Q. It's gonna guess it's four and a half uh, gigabytes at the end of this, which it's usually pretty accurate about that. Never hit export because that sucks. It renders it directly in Premiere. It means you can't close Premiere or pause it or do anything, I don't think. So just Q and it'll open up in Media Encoder. And then whenever I want, I can just hit the hit the Start Q button. It'll start rendering it. I can pause it whenever I want and stuff. And it just remembers my queue of things to render. So I can even close that. And if I were to edit more things and hit Control M and Q them, they'd be put into that render list. And you can just have it render overnight or something if you if you don't want to do that in the background. Uh, that's how I edit the average Let's Play video. I'm gonna go and go th actually go through the audio off screen, and let's go into the last step, which would be the thumbnail before I'm allowed to render it and throw it online. All right, we're on the final step now, which is doing the thumbnail. Uh, this whole template thing that I've created here is heavily, heavily based off actually um, one from my buddy Hero They Call Me of the Heroes Wrestling Podcast and, of course, his own channel where he just makes stuff. Uh, go search up Hero They Call Me on YouTube if you want to see it. I'm on the Heroes Wrestling Podcast every week. Uh, these new thumbnails I've been making, which people have been seeming to like a lot more. I've only ever heard one person who liked the old versions more, and I like these new ones a lot more. Um, I just got this one from him. He does way better thumbnails than me, and I was complaining about how shitty my thumbnails are, and he's like, Fuck it, just use what I use. I was like, okay. So I just basically used his as a template and made, made my own version of what he does. Um, if you're not familiar with how Photoshop works, uh, I just have a group one here that I put a lot of the, the stable stuff that's in every episode, you know, like this. I make variations of it for each individual game I do. I just go to blending options on the background here and I use this uh, gradient thing to pick my color and whatever I want when I want for the game. I pick up a logo for the game that has a transparent background, and I blend option and put stroke on it so it's got that nice popping uh, background. Like, normally it would be like that, and you can't see that shit on that little thumbnail. So I just have that stroke on it. In fact, make it easier to see. It looks jagged and shitty on here, but when you actually see these thumbnails on YouTube, they're tiny. You would never see how shitty it looks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, Pictures, pictures. Look, love my fucking Arn Anderson picture there. Got that shit for videos. Got my premiere screenshots. As a bonus here, here's one of my favorite screenshots I've ever taken in WWE 2K15. What the fuck happened to Roman Reigns' face? But back to the video. Uh, so this is our screenshot we took earlier, right? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, I'm a genius. We're just scroll that down here. Um, I blow our group one here. And you know what? I don't think I want to fuck with that at all. That looks great. Normally I'd like move it around and resize it a little bit, but that looks pretty good. Um, it's really big, so in the thumbnail people will probably be able to tell what it is. Um, I could make it a little bigger. Let's lock that. And just... Just a tiny bit bigger. That's fine. We also have this brightness and contrast thing here. That's a little preset I have, just gives you a little bit more brightness, takes away a little bit of contrast. I usually only put that on thumbnails that are a bit darker to make it more noticeable what's in it. Um, you know what, I think I'll have it on for this one. And then I had to change the part number, so this one's part 26. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change that to a 6. And it looks like it still fits just fine within my border, so I don't need to resize it at all. So I'm going to control shift s it's already in the Shadow Mordor file for this. I'm just going to type in uh, 26, saved as a JPEG, because that's what YouTube thumbnails kind of like. PNGs tend to look the same in that tiny, tiny little window, 
and they're a bigger file size, and YouTube doesn't like thumbnails of a big file size. So that's it, that's the whole thumbnail, and that's the whole process from beginning to end of how I make one of my Let's Play or Gameplay videos. If you were interested in this at all, and you found it interesting, then yay! Check out the playlist and I'll do more episodes of me showing how I do stuff. The next one might be how I do a creepypasta reading, although I've done two videos on that before. On One was me of reading it live, and another one was uh, me editing it, so... Don't know if I even need to make that one. I can show how I do a Payday 2 101 episode. I can show how I stream. Maybe I'll do the stream one next. If you have any requests for anything that I didn't say here, like in terms of... If I didn't just now say something you want to see me do on the show, well... You can tell me, of course, you want to see any of those, but if you have any ideas for ones that I could show of how I do a thing that I didn't just bring up, let me know in the comments section, and I might just get on that. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, have a nice day.